any company starts with an idea, right? You, you go with the idea, you start looking for a problem to solve. We found one of those problems that existed in the oil and gas industry. And it was the problem of um, sending people out, checking on things and not getting good results, not getting repeatable results. And so we understood at WellAware, the, the first place we had to start was getting great data from the field. WellAware is a company that connects people to the things that matter. So in the workplace, that usually means connecting people to critical infrastructure, machines that make up the core part of their business. And we basically help them monitor those things, control them, optimize them, and get information from them that makes their business more successful. Inherently, anytime somebody invests in the company, you become very vested in seeing a successful financial return for those people that believed in us. You know. I wouldn't call it a burden because it's an opportunity, but it's one that I do not treat lightly. It's one that I treat very seriously. And so when I looked at where we were six, seven years into WellAware, um, you know, the things I recognized were we had worked really hard, we developed some amazing technologies, we had focused in oil and gas, but we didn't have the financial results that I would have expected. We knew we had something because we could see it in the data. We knew we had the ability to help people, but people wouldn't let us help them. And that's a very hard place to be. It was a very typical though startup. Most companies tend to invest heavily and build before they figured out what they're supposed to be building. I think the biggest thing that, that Blake saw when he got here was that we had substantially underfunded our go-to-market strategy, which was our sales and marketing platform. That sales model wasn't very scalable. It wasn't scalable within oil and gas, and it definitely wasn't scalable outside of oil and gas. Are there other models out there? You know, could, we, could we build a, a lead generation platform and a direct sales platform where we're calling people instead of meeting with them? and actually have success. Yeah, how, how do you find leads? And in, you know, in most businesses pre-internet, you know, it was cold calling on the telephone or relationship-based. And so he went in and basically said, hey, let's move to a direct sales model, one that he had experienced before in prior companies and had great results with, and also a full digital marketing platform. It is no longer sufficient to blast customers with emails about your product capabilities. Customers are looking for unique approaches to solving their unique problems. The business models have not kept up with technology, and that's where I think all the, all the real heavy lifting is gonna to need to take place in the next decade. For example, we take customers through a series of blogs that drive awareness followed by engagement and ultimately conversion into sales. With regard to a format like webinars, we create a highly interactive experience that imparts learning and knowledge. In building faith in what we are as a company, the customers will join us on that journey. We know how effective our content is. We know how long someone stays on a web page. We know, you know, when they decide to get engaged with us, we provide a very easy way for them to share their information so we can get back to them quickly. This is how the next generation of business leaders want to get to know our companies. The sales model where we had a person in each city, it took us six years to get to a million dollars of recurring revenue. Once we implemented the digital marketing platform, it took us six months to add the second million. If you're not rapidly uh, adopting digital marketing techniques, I think it's gonna be extremely difficult for you to compete.